we're going to be talking about four proven masculine traits that create female desire and attraction, okay? And what a lot of guys are going to think this is about is they're going to think, right, okay, so you've got to be tall, you've got to be good looking, you've got to be chiseled, you've got to look like Henry Cavill, basically, you've got to have 12 pack abs, uh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Now, those things are important, right? I mean, obviously, right, looks are going to make a difference, okay? We live in a very visual society, of course, women, men are incredibly visual creatures, but women as well, they like a good looking dude. So we can't deny that. Obviously, things like social status and, you know, your financial situation, they're going to play into it as well. Height, yeah, that's another thing, although I think that gets overplayed quite a lot online. Um, but the fact of the matter is this, there are plenty of guys who have all of that stuff, okay? They're, we coach guys who are decent looking, who are in shape, who are making money, they've got a good career, they're doing all of the stuff on paper that they're told that they should do. And they're still not getting any action. Okay, so what's going on? And what is the problem? Why are they not? Why are they not breaking through? Okay, and that's what we're going to talk about today, because there are four masculine traits that you really, really, really need to consider and get dialed in, in order to to sort this situation out. Okay, the fundamentals, yes, of course, you want to make sure that you look as good as possible. So that obviously includes working out, it includes, um, you know, making sure that you're well dressed, well groomed, all of that good stuff. Yes, obviously do that. Obviously level up as far as you know, your finances are concerned, etc. Obviously, try and live an interesting life. So you've got some cool stuff to talk about, etc. Work with your social skills, we're going to be talking about that anyway today. But there are four key things that you really, really, really need to get dialed in. And they don't all get talked about enough, or at least they don't get talked about in the context of dating enough. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. There are four things. And this is why, so myself and James Tusk, James was actually going to be on the show today. He wasn't able to make it because he's traveling and he's in different time zones and stuff. But we were going to have James on. Maybe we'll get him on next week and we can talk to him about some other aspects of modern dating. But um, myself and Tusk, obviously, we've worked together. If you guys know me from the other you know, work I've done on his channel or my, my other channel, you'll know that we've worked together for quite a long time. We have a very similar mindset as far as this dating stuff's concerned. We've traveled together, et cetera, et cetera. And we've really been racking our brains to try to figure out, okay, so so what is what are the missing pieces here? Because often what will happen, right, is we'll get guys who come to us for training. And on the surface, they're like, yeah, you know, listen, I, I want to, you know, I want to have a better dating life. I want to meet more girls. I, I want to meet some girls if they're not getting any action. And they're like, um, you know, I want to get better at this stuff. I want to get this part of my life sorted. Sorry, I'm just going to send a quick message to someone. Um, and um, yeah, you know, so they come with good intentions. They come with the desire to make change. But then what happens is that um, what happens is that they, you know, we try then to get them to take action. So we say, okay, right. So, you know, you want to do this, you want to do that. And um and they they don't they don't take action or, or or if they do they'll pay sort of lip service to what we ask them to do they'll do the kind of bare minimum or they'll turn up to if it's a course you know they'll turn up to our classes they'll listen to the webinars they'll watch all the videos all that kind of stuff but when it actually comes to okay you going out there and actually talking to real life women and actually you know you know doing something that might move the dial in real life uh, there's always some excuse that comes up. The dog ate my homework. I didn't have time. I'm going through a difficult time at the moment. You know, I, blah, 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 blah. There's always an excuse. And so we're kind of sitting there racking our brains thinking, well, why is it that these guys who are saying that they want to have, uh, you know, either a very abundant sex life or, you know, they want to meet that perfect girl and have a great relationship with her and maybe settle down. Why are they not doing the very fucking basic things? And if and even if they are doing some of those things, why are they not succeeding? What what are the missing pieces here? Okay, and so we formulated this concept which we've called Edge. And Edge E D G E is in fact an acronym. Okay, and it stands for the four different components of masculinity that you really need in order to succeed in today's dating marketplace. So I'll go through them now. Spoiler alert. Okay, so the first is elite hormone optimization. Okay, and we're going to be talking about these as as we go through the the live. Uh, elite hormone optimization is the E. 
The D is what we've called dangerous man formula, okay? The G is godlike sexual magnetism, okay? And then the final E is emotional and social intelligence mastery. So our view, and this is based on over 25 years of experience in the dating field. I've been a coach for over a decade. He's been coaching for many, many years all over the world as well. We've worked with, as I say, combined thousands of students, many different countries. So we've really got a very, you know, probably in the best in the world sense of what guys' problems are and what's happening out there in the current dating marketplace. These are the things you need. I'll just repeat them again, and then we'll get into them in more detail. So um, elite hormone optimization, all right, your hormones, dangerous man formula, which I'll explain, godlike sexual magnetism, uh, and then emotional and social intelligence mastery. All right. So those are the four components that you need. Now, I'm not saying that you also don't need to look your best. I'm not saying that you also don't need to, you know, um, make an effort as far as your appearance is concerned, as far as your bloody personal hygiene is concerned. You know, you've got to fucking, like, you want to be ticking as many boxes as you can. But this stuff, okay, this stuff is often ignored. And the problem is that guys will come to dating programs. It'll be like, all right, so, uh, okay, so I learn these lines and then I say this to her and then, uh, you know, I text her and then I, uh, and, and they think it's this kind of like, right, well, I've got the, I've got the muscles. I've got some money. I've got a decent job. I've got a car. And I've done these, I've, I've said these lines that I've seen on YouTube. So, so what's the problem? Why do I not have a beautiful girlfriend sitting at home for me? And what they don't realize is that fundamentally, even with those building blocks, they are not sufficiently attractive. Okay. So now let's get into this. And I want to talk about each of these things in turn. So the first thing is, um, and I've got some sort of articles to show you to, to bring this stuff to life. The first thing is uh, what I've called elite, or what we've called rather, elite hormonal optimization, which is, which is what you, you need to do. Now, the, the fact of the matter is this. Testosterone levels have declined significantly um, over the past two decades. Okay, So this article, this is from a site called Helio. Um, but this has been reported all over the place. We're going to look at another site in a moment. Um, it says here, I mean, this was originally published in 2007, right? And it's been and, and it's been republished since. So, so this has been a problem for a long time. It says here, during the past two decades, testosterone uh, levels in American men have rapidly uh, declined. Sorry, I just need to send a quick message. Sorry, just a little technical issue there. Uh, yeah, so this is saying um, that, um, I'll get in the way of that rather large looking gentleman in the picture. Uh, yeah, so look, um, the information comes from long-term perspective study that has evaluated changes in serum testosterone on a population-wide basis. Okay, so again, this is this is going back a bit, but it just shows you that this has been a problem for, for some time. Um, the study was published in the Journal of Clinical N... Uh, oh, I can never pronounce this. Endocrinology and Metabolism. The interesting thing we discovered was that on average, when we measured the testosterone in the blood of a 60-year-old in 1989, it was higher than that of a different 60-year-old measured in 1995, said Thomas Traverson, uh, the PhD, who's a PhD of the New England Research Institute from Watertown, Massachusetts. We observed the same phenomenon over a wide range of ages. So... And then later it goes, although testosterone loss is common as men age, it is often associated with diabetes, abdominal obesity, sexual dysfunction, depression, and other adverse conditions. Okay, fine. But now what we're seeing, and I'll show you this as, as we go forward, what we're now seeing is that even in much younger guys, there is this problem with, um, with reduced testosterone. Okay, so as I say, I'm going to show you another article in a second, and we'll go into this in, in some more detail. But why is this a problem? Well, as I said, one of the 
huge issues that we've had when we've been coaching men and trying to actually get them. Because look, I mean, fundamentally, right? If you want to meet some, if you want to meet women, what have you got to do? You've got to go out and talk to women. You're either going to do that or you're going to be on the dating sites, which is, you know, fine. Be on the dating apps. That's great. Problem with the dating apps, of course, is that they don't work very well for a large majority of men because women are just not swiping on the majority of men. Um, so putting the dating apps to one side, if you want to improve your odds, and I would advise this anyway, even if you are on all the dating apps, I would still advise that you get out there and you learn how to interact with people in real life. Okay. Um, as I say, when we're trying to get dudes to do that, what we find is they, they, they just don't do it. They just, you know, or they'll make excuses and they don't do it. So we were thinking, so we were thinking, so what is it then? Could, and, and then, you know, we're seeing all these reports about, about the problem with testosterone in the West. And this is stuff, something that's been, you know, talked about a lot on, uh, in the manosphere and so on. And we sort of thought, well, well, maybe there's a correlation with that. Maybe there's a correlation with that. If testosterone is falling, because you've got to have the juice, right, in order to to want to actually go out there and, and make something happen. You've got to have the you, you've got to have that internal fire to actually want to go and do the things that you need to do, right? And if if you're if you're already starting from a hormonally, you know, disadvantaged baseline, it's very hard to get yourself into that into that kind of that mode of like, fuck, I've got to go out there and I'm really gonna I'm really gonna push this. I'm really gonna make something happen. Okay. Um we got the chat up now. Um, marriage causes divorce. No philosophical musings today. Well, we, you know, we might have a few. Let's, let's see how it goes. Um, his, uh, he's got a, a list of things that he thinks I think are the masculine traits. Be emotionally available. Learn horoscopes. <laughs> Confidence. Communication. Don't be on the spectrum. Okay, fine. And then Rowan says, what if you don't want to take TRT or test because you are too young? Normal supplements without psalms are proven not to increase testosterone much and already have good sleep exercise all right well that's that's a very specific question and look um i mean what i would i need to say really is look i'm not i'm not an expert in this stuff i do work with a dude um called dr dave lee we might get him on the show at some point he's a really cool guy um he's a world leading expert in hormones and hormonal you know optimization for for men and He's somebody who really, really fucking understands this stuff on a very granular level, okay? So I would always defer to an expert with this stuff. And I think that if this is something, however old you are, whether you're young, you're middle-aged, or you're old, this is something that really you need to... First, you need to get the blood checked, okay? And then you need to go to an expert with the results and get their feedback on what they think is going on. But... Um, this article here is from a company called Medichex. Now, I've used this company myself several times to get my blood work done, you know, to get my blood test done. And what I normally do, and this is the advice of Dave, was I would normally get like a full panel um, blood test done. So I'm looking at everything. I'm not just looking at testosterone. It's not just, right, what, what's my testosterone level? I'm looking at, you're look, there's all of these different things that you could look at, including things like thyroid. There's something called the sex hormone binding agent, which we discovered, we didn't know this, but we discovered can actually suppress testosterone. This was an issue that, 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 that James had. So although his testosterone level, his free testosterone level was, was high or it was decent. But what we didn't know was that his, his sex uh, hormone binding agent level was also high, and that was suppressing the effect of his testosterone. Okay. So effectively, he was operating on in a, in a low test manner, although on paper, it would look like he was high testosterone. So it's little things like that. You know, I, I had no idea about any of this and nor did he before we started working with Dave. So it's not as simple as just, you know, going to your NHS doctor or going to your local GP and asking for a testosterone test and then going, okay, yeah, it's fine. No, no worries. On to the next thing, right? There's probably more going on, which is why it's good to get like a real, um, a really in-depth analysis of all the hormones.